Hello and welcome to the Beginner Quilting Video Tutorial Series by Quilt Addicts Anonymous. I'm Stephanie Sebbing. This series is sponsored by QT Fabrics. QT Fabrics proudly sponsors this video tutorial series from Quilt Addicts Anonymous. Make sure you check out their fabrics and join the fun over at qtfabrics.com. They imagine so you can create. So I'm going to show you a couple of different ways to cut squares from your fabric yardage that you get. Um, in quilting there usually are a couple of different correct ways to do any one thing. So you just need to find the way that makes the most sense in your brain and do it that way. So let's get started. So I really like these Ulfa frosted rulers. Uh, they have a little bit of a frosting to them and coating on the back. It doesn't make it any more difficult to, like the ruler stays in place. The coating doesn't affect that at all. It'll stay put once you get it in position. But what it does is it sort of has this, like if you've ever worked with like transparencies in Photoshop or something, it just makes it a little bit cloudier for the fabric so it's easier to see where everything is and this works really well on busy prints like this one and then also plain white ones. Um, I just really like them. I find it really easy to see the lines which is very important when you are cutting. So for this pattern which you can get over at shop.quiltaddictsanonymous.com for free just go click we'll, we'll have a link to it in the video description below but you also can search for the split nine patch pattern. Well the pattern is free to go along with this tutorial and we also give you a coupon code for everything that you need to make your first quilt and that way you can get started and uh, really have a lot of fun with quilting. So the first way I'm going to teach you to cut is by using your ruler. The ruler I recommend you get is one that is six inches by 24 inches wide and we need to cut exactly six inches wide for this uh, project so that's good. So what I'm doing is I'm lining up an inch line on the ruler exactly even with the fold of the fabric. The reason you want to do that is if for some reason this were crooked, like say like that, then you would have a crooked strip and if you need to be able to cut like a seven square um, or an odd numbered square over that uh, fold in order to get the right number, then you're not going to have a square piece. Or if you're cutting strips to do strip piecing, um, which is really common practice, you're going to have a bend in that strip and so it's not going to work. So I always need to make sure that that one inch line is exactly even with the fold of your fabric. Doesn't really matter what's going on at the bottom with the selvage because we're going to cut that off, but that top part needs to be exactly even with the one inch line. All right, so when I am getting started, when I recommend new people do this, I recommend you put your hand sort of toward the bottom of the ruler and have your pinky to the left of that ruler. That does two things. It keeps your fingers out of the way of the edge of the rotary cutter because these are really sharp and you can cut yourself pretty seriously with them if you're not careful. And the second part is it's gonna help you keep your ruler in place and keep it from shifting on you as you're working because that's like the worst thing because then you have to recut sometimes because you've cut something too skinny or too wide. Too wide is okay, you can fix. Too skinny, you know, you're just out of luck and you need to use that for something else. So what I recommend you do is you start at the bottom and once you get halfway up, you're gonna pause, keep your rotary cutter down and in place, and then move your hand up. And so I sew my pinky to the side and I have my whole palm down on that ruler. And I'm just keeping that fabric in place. And then I'm able to just move this to the side and we're good to go. Now you may have noticed we need to cut a six inch piece, but I've got my ruler six inches wide, but I left some hanging off. The reason why is no matter uh, how straight it's cut at the fabric store, it's never gonna be perfectly straight when it arrives home because it's been folded up and put in place or put in your bag and maybe it's been pre-washed and so it just isn't straight anymore. So you always are gonna wanna overcut on your first one and that way you can straighten up and even up this edge and get a nice straight piece. So I'm gonna show you how to straighten and neaten up that left edge. So I'm gonna flip this over so that the edge that I just cut is now on the left. So this is the nice straight side that we just cut. Now I'm going to arrange this so that my one inch mark is still even with that fold and the side of my ruler is now even with the edge that I just cut. So now I know that I'm square along the left edge and along the top here. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna start cutting the bottom, pause with my blade down, move my hand up, 
put my pinky on the left of that ruler to help keep it from shifting and put my whole palm down. And one thing you can notice is you can hear that rotary cutter cutting. So if you're not hearing that sound that you're hearing on the video, that means you haven't cut all the way through and you're gonna have a problem when you go to pull your strip apart. So make sure you're listening for that sound. You don't need to like give yourself carpal tunnel as you're cutting. If you are, then you're holding it wrong or maybe it's time for a new blade, but um, you do wanna give it a little bit of elbow grease, but not so serious to where you're hurting yourself and it hurts to cut. Um, if it does hurt to cut, you can always try an ergonomic rotary cutter, which I talked about in the what you need to get starting video. So go ahead and watch that again if you're having trouble with your rotary cutter blade. So that's how to cut using your ruler. And you would just keep going down the width of fabric until you had enough strips, just lining it up um, with the edge that you just cut and cutting six inches down. So now I'm gonna show you how to cut if you wanna use your mat to measure. So this is really handy if you have a lot of strips to cut, especially if you have a really large mat, sometimes you can cut them all at once. So it's pretty handy and pretty cool. So I'm gonna show you how to do that next. So if you look at your mat, your mat has all these measurements on them for you already. So we need to cut to six inches. So what we can do is we can use a six inch mark on the mat and the zero inch mark to measure and get everything set up. So I'm gonna show you kind of how I would line this up. So I'm gonna line it up so that that fold is along the one inch mark of my ruler or of my mat. And my cut edge that I already have evenly cut is even with zero inch here. So I've already squared up my left side and then this side is even with the one inch mark. And then if I take my ruler and I lay it down on the six inch mark, I usually will still have my inch line even with that fold. And now if I cut up the side, then I'm gonna be able to cut at six, 12, and 18, and cut all the strips I need for this without having to reposition the fabric. I'm gonna show you how I do that. All right, so I've got it positioned at the six inch mark, and I've lined it up at the bottom as well as at the top. Go ahead and cut, move my hand up, keep going. Now the next measurement I wanna look for is 12 because six plus six is 12. If you have an odd measurement, you like seven eighths or something, you might want to consider either just using your ruler to cut while you're getting used to it or writing out where you're supposed to cut as you go along. That way you don't accidentally make a mistake and cut the wrong size strip. So now I'm gonna cut it 18. So I've still got my one inch line lined up with the fold of that fabric and the fold of the fabric is still even with the one inch line on my mat. And I've got it lined up with 18 at the bottom of the mat and then also at the top. So now I very quickly cut three different strips all using my mat to measure without having to move the fabric once. So we're not done quite yet. I still have to cut these into squares and I'm gonna show you how to do that using a square ruler and then also using the mat to measure. So we'll do that next. So these rulers come in lots of different sizes. I find the six and a half inch square is the most versatile because I can use it for a lot of different things. So this one is wider than what we need for this block because it's about a half inch wider than our strip. So what I wanna do is I never wanna have this salvage. It has a different weave and so you don't wanna include that in your quilt. So what I'm doing is I'm measuring so that I'm about a quarter of an inch or so inside of where this salvage is. Um, on one side, it will have the printing of the fabric of what's in it and the colors that are used in the printing. And on the other side, you're just gonna see some little perforated dots, but you don't wanna use either side even though the printing does go all the way to the edge on the other side. So I'm about a quarter inch of the toe in from that selvage so I can cut that off and I want to always start from the selvage end because sometimes you need to be able to cut an odd piece from the selvage or from the fold, fabric fold. So I've got my six inch mark even with the edge of the top of my strip and I have the edge of the ruler even with the bottom. So now I can put my hand here. I still keep my pinky to the left to help stabilize that ruler and keep my fingers well out of the way of the rotary cutter. So I'm able to move that to the side. Now I can flip this around just like we did for the strip 
and I can go ahead and cut this. So now we've got a couple extra things to keep in mind when we're making this square. Now I've got the six inch mark, even with the edge that I just cut and flipped now to the left. And I've got six inches even with the top and the edge of the ruler even with the bottom. So now I know I'm gonna get a nice six inch square. Go ahead and trim that off. And then this is just trash. Although there are lots of projects that you can do with a salvage, so you might wanna check those out if you wanna have fun with that. So I'm just gonna continue cutting down the strip until I have cut all of my six inch squares. So this method takes a little bit longer, but if you're a beginner, you might want to consider doing it this way because you're gonna be making sure at each point that you're measuring correctly. So that gives you a good repetitive motion so that you know what you're doing. And it also allows you to really take your time and get each measurement correct. So here's what I mean. Sometimes you need to be able to cut something across the fold. So as when you unfold this, it is actually a pretty big strip. I could get another six inch square out of it. It's a little bit longer than that one. Um, I don't need to for this pattern, but sometimes you do need to cut one final one across the fold, which is why it's important to make sure that this is nice and straight when you're cutting your strips. So now I'm gonna show you how to use the mat to measure and cut your six inch squares using the measurements on the mat. So just like when we were using the mat to measure to cut our long strips, we can do that again to cut our short squares as well. So to do that, I have lined up the fabric with any inch line on the ruler. It doesn't matter which, as long as it's nice and straight across. And now I can take my ruler and I can line it up at the six inch mark. This is six inches here. I also could take my long ruler and I could line it up all the way from the top to the bottom, from six in the bottom to six in the top. Whichever works best for you and your brain is totally fine. So for this one, I can get it nice and lined up. And I can cut there at six. We'll cut again at 12. And then again at 18. And this is nice because it just kind of speeds up the process a little bit because you aren't constantly having to move your fabric in between. Now we still need to cut off the selvage. If you notice, I have it hanging a little bit past the zero inch mark on our mat. So what do you wanna do for that? Is just flip your entire mat around. And I am right-handed, so that's why I'm cutting in this direction. If you're left-handed, everything would be reverse of what I'm doing. So now without moving the fabric at all, we just flip that mat around. I'm now lining it up so that it is even with the zero inch mark on my mat. And now I can just cut off that root, that selvage and use that elsewhere. So now we've cut six more of these really quickly. All right, as a bonus, I'm gonna show you how you can cut multiples of these at one time using the mat to measure and your long ruler. Now, just a hint and a little tip here is you maybe don't wanna cut this way the first time you do it because if you cut one thing wrong, then they're all going to be wrong. So once you kind of have gotten used to the process of cutting and you feel like you're pretty accurate with the way that you're cutting, then that's the time to go ahead and um, use your this method to cut multiple at a time. So I flip my mat back around so that my numbers are going from one to 24, going up as I go to the left. And I'm going to lay my fabric down, again, having it along an inch line doesn't matter which one. And then I have, we'll move it up a little bit so you can see the entire strip. And then I have my salvage hanging off the edge. One note here, when you're laying your strips out, you kind of want to think in your head, like, where do I need to cut? So for this one, 18 is the largest area where I need to cut right here. So I want to make sure I have fabric going past that. And as long as you do, then you're going to be fine and you won't run out of fabric. But say like if you needed to have 20 inches and your strip was a little short, you would want to make sure that you like line that up perfectly so that you had your selvage hanging past zero and you had the fold of your fabric going past 20. And then that will ensure that you have plenty of fabric and you're not short at the end. So now I'm going to take a second strip and then I'm gonna lay it on top, but two inches above. And that gives me enough space to where I'm gonna be cutting through a couple layers at one time, but 
you know, it's not too much overlap. So I've got this lined up on the inch line. I have not moved the first piece and you could keep going. You can cut as many as you want. Just leave about two inches of space in between each one. So I'm gonna use my long ruler for this because my short one is too short to see all my lines. So what I'm doing is I'm lining this up with the six inch mark, which is where I'm supposed to be cutting for this pattern at the top of my mat and at the bottom. And I also have an inch line even with the top of this strip, which, and it's even with the bottom of this strip. So that gives me a couple of square points of reference to make sure I am gonna end up with squares at the end. So now I'm putting my hand right over these strips and I'm, I am giving it a good bit of, of pressure there, um, just a little bit of elbow grease so that way my ruler doesn't shift because again, if you cut one of these wrong, you're gonna cut multiple wrong. So now I've cut that. I'm not moving any of the fabric. I'm just moving my ruler and I'm setting it down at the 12 inch mark because six plus six is 12. And so I'm even with 12 at the top and bottom. I've got an inch line at the top of these strips and at the bottom. And I've got my pinky on the side and my palm flat to keep that ruler from shifting. I find people who go like this where it's just their fingertips on it, they have a lot more trouble with it shifting than if you were to just put your whole palm on the ruler. All right, so our last cut's gonna be at 18. So I've got it even with the 18 inch mark at the top and the bottom. Inch lines are even here and there. So I can give that a trim and move those to the side. Now we're gonna flip our entire mat around just like we did the last time. And now I'm going to put my ruler, I haven't moved my fabric at all, even with the zero inch mark, and I still have my inch lines even with the edges of those fabrics so I know I'm doing good. So now I was able to cut 12 squares really quickly and then you can get to sewing because that's the fun part. So when you're practicing cutting for the first time, you may not wanna do it on the fabric you wanna use in your quilt because there are three things that contribute to a really great quilt. One is cutting accurately because basically quilting is a giant geometry lesson where the, the fabrics have to start out one size in order to end up another size when they're all sewn together. So you need to cut accurately. Um, the second is sewing an accurate quarter and seam, which is in our next video. And the third is pressing correctly so that you don't end up with any pleats and end up with blocks that are smaller than they should be, which we'll go over when we're actually putting the block together. But you may wanna try this, either get extra fabric when you're at the store, so that way if you make a mistake, it's not the end of the world, you, you can still have more of that fabric. And, or just, you know, maybe you've got a stash, you've been collecting for a while and you haven't, you are not quite sure what to do with it. Um, practice on that, make sure you can cut accurately before you like do it on the fabric that matters. And, or just get a friend who has sewn to kind of look over your shoulder as you're doing it. So I hope you're enjoying these videos. Make sure you head over to shop.quiltaddictsnovice.com and download the pattern for split nine patch. It tells you all of your cutting instructions that you need for this quilt. And you'll also get a special coupon code so that way you can get a discount on everything that you need to make your first quilt with Quilt Addicts Anonymous. And also a big thanks to QT Fabrics for sponsoring this video. We're using their fabric throughout this quilt. This is the Tango collection and it is super cute. And when this is done and has hung in the shop for a little bit, it's going to go to my daughter who is obsessed with butterflies currently. So this is gonna look great in her room. Um, but go check that out and get your special coupon over at shop.quiltmatixonomous.com and make sure you come back to learn how to sew your quarter inch seam. QT Fabrics proudly sponsors this video tutorial series from Quilt Addicts Anonymous. Make sure you check out their fabrics and join the fun over at qtfabrics.com. They imagine so you can create.